أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفاء خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة المائدة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لعن الذين كفروا من بني إسرائيل على لسان دابود وعيسى بن مريم ذلك بما عصوا وكانوا يعتدون كانوا لا يتناهون عن منكر فعلوه لبئس ما كانوا يفعلون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم انس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقران العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين امين dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters in islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh by the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are beginning the study of surah al-maida from ayah number 78 today lorin alladhina kafaru min bani israil as you know the discourse regarding the people of the book the jews and the christians is continuing now a very strong word is coming here lu'in alladhina kafaru min bani israil ala lisan dawud wa isa ibn maryam those from bani israil who disbelieved or who didn't have the real faith it's not necessary that this kufr may be always legal form the real kufr i have emphasized this point legal iman real iman legal kufr real kufr legal irtidad and real irtidad these things should be very clear because generally we pass from these verses you know and these ayat keeping the only the legal aspect in our mind and that becomes a hindrance an obstruction in reaching the essence of the ayat to those of bani israil because as a whole they were a muslim ummah legally they were not kafirs but actually if we see to the real iman the real faith most of them were lacking it just as we today are lacking it we are muslims we profess to be muslims we are testifying la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah everything is okay we are muslims but how many of us have they have the real iman it's actually a different issue you know there is one proof of it which nobody can refute that the great majority of the muslim today are not mu'mins what's the proof we read the ayah in surah ali ibran wala tahinu wala tahzanu wa antum al-alauna in kuntum mu'minin don't be grieved O oh Muslims, we promise to you, you will be supreme. You will dominate. 
only if you are moments. And we are not dominating. We are being trampled down under the, under the feet of others. We are controlled by others. Our resources are actually in their own hands now. Only, apparently, we are free. We have 60 or more free Muslim countries in the world. Can we really point out to a country which is really free? That means we are not moments. Two and two go to make four. There can be no escape from it. The same was the case with Bani Israel. They were a Muslim Umar, no doubt. But the majority of them lacked the real Iman. And now here a very strong word is used. Loina. They were cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find, you know, the stronger words. These are the wordings from Surah Al-Baqarah. There are, you know, nearly the same wordings appear with a little difference in Surah Al-Ibran. And we can see it, our own picture in this mirror. Zurabat alayna az-zillatu wal-maskana. Al-yawm. Today, we are the humiliated ones. Humility, humiliation has been heaped upon us. Anyhow, loyna, cursed. They were cursed. Cursed by whom? Allah. But Allah doesn't speak directly to everybody. Allah lisaan Dawood wa Isa ibn Maryam. On the tongue of Dawood alayhi salatu wa salam and Isa, son of Mary. They cursed. And we can find in the Gospels how Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam criticized the Jews. You are like serpents. You are like graves in which there is nothing but decayed bones. But above the grave you have a very good white color and white, you know, cloth. In the same way, you pose to be very pious people, religious people. Rabbani Yoon. But actually within you is hidden a character, a extremely mean character. So that was the plight of Bani Israel. And same is ours. لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَلَىٰ لِسَانِ دَعُودَ وَعِيسَ بِنَا الْمِرَدِيَمْ ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْا وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ And this was not without any cause. This was because they had been transgressing, disobeying. عَصَوْا مَعْصِيَةً وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ They were transgressing the limits. كَانُوا لَا يَتَنَاهُونَ And one of their very big shortcomings, and again, don't feel offended, I will invite you to see whether we are not doing the same. Kanu la yatana hauna al munkarin falu. They didn't forbid each other from the wrong things which they were doing. Because when a nation or a community as a whole goes down, they have a gentleman agreement among themselves. You don't criticize me, I won't criticize you. Let us make that agreement. Kanu la yatana hauna al munkarin falu. They were not forbidding each other on the wrong things. They were they were committing. The base of Kanu ya falun. Definitely, it was very evil what they were doing. Tara kasira minhu ya tawallahu la ladina kafaru. You will see many of them making friends. And taking them as protectors. Whom? Alladina kafaru. Here kafaru means something else. The idolaters. The people of Arabia who are worshipping idols. The associators with Allah, the pagan Arabs. They used to say, well, they are on a better level than these Muslims. This is the Extremity, extremism of enmity they had against Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Muslims. Tara kasiram minhu ya tawallahu na ladina kafaru le bi sama qadbat lahum anfusuhum. Surely, very evil and bad is what their souls have sent forward for themselves. This is the man bil akhirah. Whatever we are doing, we are sending it for ourselves. We shall find it in the hereafter. لَبِيَسَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لَهُمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ 
their own ids and libidos and baser selves. They are sending, what they are sending? The stocks, they are gathering in the hereafter. They are very bad. And sakhit Allah alayhim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been angered upon them. وَفِي الْعَزَابِ هُمْ خَالِدُونَ And they will abide forever in the punishment, in the chastisement. وَلَوْ كَانُوا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالنَّبِيِّ Had they believed really in Allah and this Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ And what has been sent down to him صلى الله عليه وسلم مَا اتَّخَذُهُمْ أَوْلِيَا They would not have made friends with these pageants and idolaters. وَلَكِنَّ كَسِيرًا مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ but most of them are actually themselves transgressors. So they are making friendship with them. Now a very important subject is coming. A difference of behavior of these two groups of the people of the book. The Jews were bitter, most enemies. And bracketed them are the idolaters, the pageants who openly associate others with Allah. On the contrary, the attitude of the Christians as a whole at the time of the Prophet ﷺ was absolutely different. Although not many of them embraced Islam, except for the people in Abyssinia. But you know, the letters of invitation which were sent to them most of them honored the letters of the Prophet ﷺ. They were very lukewarm. Heraclius, you know, he even intended to accept Islam. But he only wanted that the whole Roman Empire maybe should be converted to Islam today as 300 years ago, Constantine, the emperor, Roman emperor, had converted and the whole, you know, empire had converted to. So that the system remained the same. Constant time remained the emperor. Had he alone embraced Islam, he would have to abdicate the throne. So that was where he failed, when people didn't agree. Otherwise, he had recognized Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he is the person. About him, we find prophecies in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Anyhow, the difference, لَتَجَدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ عَدَاوَةً You'll surely find the most vehement of the people in hostility and enmity towards the towards those who have who, who believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al Yahud, the Jews, Wallazina Ashraku. And with them are bracketed the idolaters. Today also we find, you know, Israel and Bharat. How much, you know, closer to each other. This ayah is speaking for itself. And you will find the closest to them in affection and love. Those who call themselves Nasara. And this is because among them there are priests, true priests, sincere priests. And Rohbanan, there are monks. And this is because they do not take to arrogance and haughtiness. They are not proud. Now these conditions have absolutely changed. These were the conditions at the time of the Prophet Now the conditions have changed. Although they have changed temporarily, but even temporary, you know, in Allah's calendar, because one day is 1000 years, so even half day may be 500 years, the things started changing nearly 500 years ago or 400 years ago, with the advent of Protestantism. Then division of Christianity, then the 
gradual control of Jews over the Christians. And at this time, this process has reached its zenith. Although there are some voices of, you know, dissent, which you might be hearing from the southern states of the United States and the western part, the militias, etc., etc., and Lyndon H. LaRouche, people like them, they are, you know, some voices of dissension. But practically, the whole Christian world is under the thumb of the Jews, the Zionists. And Christians have lost their identity, at least for the time being. But things will change. We also believe in the second advent of Jesus. He will be coming. They also believe in it. And we have been told by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then, then Christians will close to Muslims, come close, close and closer. No difference will remain and both will become one. Islam will be the deen of these Christians also. So just as we found that in this world, the Munafiqeen were bracketed with Muslims, with Mormons. In the hereafter, they will be bracketed with the Kuffar, the unbelievers. In the same way, today, Christians and Jews are bracketed together. But before the end of this world, things are going to change. I can't say when. I can't give you the timetable. But this must happen. These are clear prophecies. Before that, the whole of the Christian world is going to wage a very big war against the Muslims, which they call Armageddon. And the Prophet ﷺ has said, named it Al-Malhamatul Uzma, the greatest war of human history. And you might be hearing these slogans from these Christians, Armageddon is coming. Jesus is coming, Armageddon is coming. This Armageddon, it is going to be a very big war with very high casualties of the Muslims. In one of these we find the words that a crow will fly and fly and fly for the whole day. He won't find even a single inch on the land without a dead body to come down. After being exhausted, it will fall on a dead body. Nine, 999 out of every 1,000 will be killed. These are the words of the Hadith. hadith. You can find these Hadith in the Kitabul Malahim and Kitabul Fitan. In every collection of Hadith, you have these chapters. Anyhow. But after that, you know, the tables will be turned, that Jesus will come down. And the leader will appear among the Muslims, Mahdi, and by their cooperation and helping each other. And some armies will come from the east to help Mahdi. And then the things will be changed. And then, you know, the Jews will be eradicated, eliminated altogether. And Christians will become Muslims. So that will be the end, inshallah. But anyhow, actually this is, you know, the condition which was there at the time of the Prophet. This ayah refers to an incident. And you know, the, this migration towards Habsha took place before the migration to Medina. So many Muslims went there. Then there was the controversy and argument. Then the Jashi Dagus. He, you know, said, okay, what Muhammad has said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what the Quran has said, is absolutely correct. So, so many people there, including himself, they accepted Islam. And a few years after the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Muslims, they migrated to Medina, a deputation of 70, you know, new Muslims, converts, you know, who were Christians before, now they were Muslims, they came over to Medina. And here, you know, when Quran was read out to them, they were so much moved by it that their eyes overflowed with tears. They were also Christians previously. And when they heard and listened to what was sent down on the Messenger of Allah, Tara, you know, you see, you look to their eyes, they are overflowing with tears. 
مما عرفوا من الحق because of the truth that they recognized and our souls you know they recognize the truth and they are moved then and our emotions you know and there is a sign of that motivation tears come to your eyes يقولون ربنا آمنا فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين and they are crying out oh our lord we believe so please write down our names among your witnesses witnesses of allah kunu qawwamina lillah shuhada bil qist kunu qawwamina bil qist shuhada lillah so please write down our names also among those who testify wa ma lana la numinu billahi wa ma jaana min al haqq and why shouldn't we believe in what believe in allah and what has reached us from the truth and we very much eagerly desire that our Lord admits us and joins us with the company of the pious and the righteous people. In the hereafter, we are joined together with them. So, we are joined together with them. So, we are joined together with them. So Allah rewarded them due to this saying of theirs. The gardens underneath which rivers are flowing, Khalidina fiha, abiding there forever. Wazalika jazaul mursaleen. And this is really the reward and recompense for the good doers, for the mursaleen. Now what actually mean is meant by mursaleen in Quran will come very soon in an ayah. This, this word is mostly misunderstood by Muslims. Ihsan we only know doing good to others. This is also one meaning of the word. But Ihsan actually as a term of Islam is making your religion more beautiful, your attachment to Allah more strong, so that your behavior as a moment becomes more and more and more beautiful. Husn. Min husn al Islam al Marke Tarkuhu Mala Yani. It's a very good hadith which came to my mind. It's a beauty of the Islam of a person that he should give up everything which is useless, giving no benefit. Your time is very precious. Either you have to use it for Fulfilling some requirements of this worldly life, you are earning, okay, it's a need. Or you spend it for earning something for the hereafter. Only whiling away time, test times, just, you know, killing the time. This, is, this doesn't become of a Muslim, who knows that every moment of today is going to become eternal in the hereafter. The reward of this limited life is going to be repaid to us in the unlimited life. Can there be any ratio between the finite and the infinite? No ratio. So every moment of this life also is so important. So Ihsan means beautifying your religion, your character, your behavior as the bondsman of Allah. But this ayah will come very soon. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَاكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمُ The same thing, you know, the contrast always. When there is the mention of the Muslim moments, then what will be the end and lot of the unbelievers? As for those who disbelieve and belie our signs and ayat, they are the companions of hellfire. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُحَرِّمُوا طَيِّبَاتِ مَا أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا O oh, you who believe, don't declare as unlawful, forbidden, whatever is pure, whatever is good, which Allah has declared as permissible. Don't exceed the limits. Now this is another extreme form. When somebody becomes, you know, over pious, pious, over muttaqi, 
مولانا مودودی یوز ٹو یوز اے ٹرم تقوا کا ہیزا اٹ از اے کنڈیشن یو نو دین یو نو دے آر ناٹ یوزنگ ایون دی پرمیسیبل تھنگس سو ٹو ٹو ٹیک سم تھنگ وچ از حرام اینڈ میک اٹ حلال فار یو از اے بگ کرائم بٹ ایکولی بگ کرائم از ٹو میک سم تھنگ ٹو ڈکلیئر سم تھنگ حرام وچ از لافل If you declare a halal, haram. Or if you declare a haram, halal. Both are equal. So one must be very cautious. That are the rule. Don't be extremist. Don't go to the other end. Inna la la yuhibbul mu'tadeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like those who exceed the limits. We find in Quran, you know, even the Prophet himself was admonished, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. یا یو نبی دے میں تو ہر نے ماہ اللہ لکھتا تقریب اور بات آز واجد ہو پروفٹ وائی آر یو ڈکلیئر ڈکلیئرنگ فار یو فار یور سیلف ایز حرام آئی ول ناٹ ٹیک اٹ اینی مور ناؤ وٹ اللہ ہیز میڈ پرمیسیبل فار یو وٹ ایور از پرمیسیبل نیور گو ٹو دی ادر سائڈ ادر ایکسٹریم وَكُلُوا بِمَّا رَضَقَكُمُ اللَّهُ حَلَالًا تَيِّبًا And do it what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And if it is halal and tayyib, pure and clean and permissible. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي أَنْتُمْ بِهِ مُؤْمِنُونَ And have taqwa. Always remain conscious of Allah. On whom you have the belief and faith. If you profess to have the belief and faith in Him and you... You remain unmindful of him, unconscious of him. Now, this reminds me of a saying of a saint. Although he was illiterate, but he was a very past person. I remember him. He's died now. He used to say, Jo dam ghafil, so dam kafir. The moments that you pass unmindful of Allah, these moments you have passed as unbelievers, not believers. Never be unmindful of Allah. Allah should remain at the conscious level every moment. So this is another definition of kufr and Islam. If you are unmindful of Allah, really this time has passed in a sort of kufr. Jo dam ghafil, so dam ghafil. La yuakhadukum allahu billagwe fi yamanikum. Allah is not going to take you to task regarding your unintentional oaths. And this is the habit of our Arab brethren. Wallahi billahi. They won't start a single sentence without wallahi. What is this wallah? Are you taking an oath? Are you declaring on oath and swearing? But it is just, you know, a, a word of common use. They don't, they don't mean it. So this is laghv. La yuakhadukum allahu bil laghv fi yamanikum. Allah is not going to. He is not such a hard taskmaster. He will just ignore. Unintentional. وَلَكِ يُعَاخِذُكُمْ مِمَا قَتْمُ الْأَيْمَانِ But any oath that you take seriously, intentionally, well, that will be accounted for. Now, if you don't fulfill it, you are doing a sin. فَكَفَّارَتُهُ If you want to break such a, such an oath, there is an expiation. And what is that? اِتْعَامُ عَشْرَةَ مَسَاكِينَ عَشْرَةَ مَسَاكِينَ Feed ten poor people. Min awsate matut ibuna ahlikum. But this should be the average food that you give to your family. Not that you are using six course dinners and you give them some loaves of bread and then you know some take go and the number is complete. Ten, ten people, I have fed them. No. Min awsate matut ibuna ahlikum. Aw kiswatuhum. Or you give them the clothing to these ten persons. Or 
setting free one slave. And here it is not essential that he should be Muslim or Mu'min. Raqaba bin Mu'mina. No. Raqaba. Khalaf. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَسِيَامُ سَلَاسَةِ اَيَّامٍ Whosoever can't afford it, so he have to keep fasting for three days. ذَلِكَ كَفَّارَةُ اَيْمَانِكُمْ This is the expiation for your, for your oaths. اِذَا حَلَفْتُمْ When you have taken them seriously. وَحْفَذُوا اَيْمَانَكُمْ And you must protect and keep your oaths. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيُّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ in this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes His commandments clear to you so that you should be thankful to Him. He's clear in everything. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu innam al-khabru wal-maisru wal-ansabu wal-azlamu rishu min amal al-shaytan. Oh, you who believe, verily wine and gambling and sacrificing to the idols and deciding about things or, or knowing luck through arrows, using the arrows. This is also a form of gambling. They are Satan's handiwork, Satan's handiwork, abomination. Fajtanebu. So refrain from these things. So that you can prosper. You can prosper spiritually. You can prosper in Iman. You can go, go higher up from Islam to Iman or from Iman to Ihsan. إِنَّمَا يُرِدِ الشَّيْطَانُ وَيُوْقِعَ مَيْذَكُمُ الْعَدَابَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ Now there were four things in the former ayah. Repetition is coming only for two. إِنَّمَا يُرِدُ الشَّيْطَانُ وَيُوْقِعَ مَيْذَكُمُ الْعَدَابَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ Repetition is for wine and gambling. Why these two things are bracketed? We find these two things bracketed in Surah Al-Baqarah. يَسَلُونَ قَالِ الْخَبْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا اِسْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَاِسْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْرِهِمَا But if you are bracketing something, there must be something common. What is common? Why does a man take wine or liquor? Because he wants to shun the bitter realities of life. Just take it. You are not ready to shun. You are not ready to face the bitter realities of life. I was born in the path of the path. Or else, the path of the path of the path was very difficult. The easy way. And what is gambling? Shirking hard work. Not trying to earn through hard work. That's by chance. Down or out. Both things are common. Shunning the bitter realities and shirking hard work. One is khamr, the other is gambling. And the other thing which is common has been given here. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانَ يُوْقِعَ بَيْرَكُمُ الْعَدَابَةُ وَالْبَغْضَةُ Verily, Satan, Satan, Satan wants to precipitate amongst you hatred and enmity. When you are not in your senses, you don't know what you are saying. So there will be disputes, you will quarrel, you will be shouting. And you know, this thing can sow the seeds of some permanent enmity also. In the same way, gamblers, if one is losing and losing and losing it, now he becomes furious. And what happens, you know, in the gambling dens, most of people know. Because if somebody is earning and he has worked for it, although he has earned something from you, okay, you don't grudge. But when you see he is earning, earning without any labor, I am losing, losing without any fault of mine, then he is enraged. 
انما يريد الشيطان ان يوقي بينكم العداوه والبغضاء في الخمر والميسر ويصدكم عن ذكر الله and he wants to bar you from the remembrance of Allah was salah wa ali salah and from the salah and the prayer falantu muntahun now this is a very stern way of addressing how are you stopping or not because this is the final you know pronouncement regarding wine in quran wa atiu la wa atiu rasul and obey allah and his messenger and obey his messenger wa zaru hizr is protection wa khudu hizrakum protect yourself protect your souls if you disobey allah and his messenger you are putting yourself in disaster you are throwing yourself yourself with your own hands into the fire of hell this is very beautiful hadith which comes to my mind the prophet said kullu ummati yadkhuluna aljannata illa man aba all of my ummat will enter paradise except those who themselves refuse now it's for the mode of expression you know so that people get excited themselves refuse to enter jannah faqila wa man aba and people asked naturally who will refuse who are those who refuse to enter jannah now the answer came man atani dakhala al jannah wa man asani faqad aba who so ever obeys me he enters jannah and who disobeys he has refused to enter jannah this is the way he taught waatiu la waatiu rasul ma hazaru fa intawallaytu fa'lamu anna ma ala rasul al balagh al mubin and if you turn your backs let it be known to you that the responsibility of our messenger is only to convey to you he will not be responsible for you on the day of judgment if he has done his duty he has conveyed now just recall the ayah which we read last night ya ayyuh an-nabiy balligh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik wa illam tafal fama ballagta risalata on the one hand that stern you know warning you do your duty in full but when you have done your duty now you are absolved of the responsibility Salamu, salamu. Let it be known to you. Let it be clear to you. In the ma'ala, Rasulun al-Balaghul Mubin, on our messenger, the responsibility is only of conveying to you the message. Less are the zina abul. This is a very profound hadith regarding the hikma and the philosophy and the wisdom of the Quran. Less are the zina amalu amal salihat jinahun fi ma taimu. There is no blame. on those people who have come to believe and have been doing good deeds <coughs> on what they had eaten or drank before because when these ayats were revealed people you know became very much thoughtful what will happen to us if it is rijsun min amali shaitan we have been taking it taking it taking it. maybe some someone of among them had accepted islam at the age of 60 he was consuming alcohol and wine throughout his life because in arabian civilization also this wine was just as a part of their food as it is in the west they were accustomed to it now they thought that you know each and every cell of my body must have wine in it <laughs> i have been consuming so much wine what will happen to me it means i am whole of my body is now rich that was their concern allah subhanahu wa taala is alleviating their concern no 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 till such time that we declared finally that it is forbidden whatever you have drunk or eaten there is no blame on you so that is the subject of the aya but now what is coming next is the most important profound 
ازامت تقو و آمنو و عمل صالحات سمت تقو و آمنو سمت تقو و احسنو و اللہ یحب المحسنین This is the ayah which gives you three stations in Islam. Legal iman, real iman, and ihsan. The same three questions were asked to the Prophet by Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. And you find it in the hadith of Jibreel. The ummu sunnah. Akhbirni anil islam. Akhbirni anil iman. Akhbirni anil ihsan. Legal iman is islam. We are Muslims, we are legally women. Real iman is the conviction that you really have it. May Allah give us all that conviction, that real belief, that yaqeen, ilm al-yaqeen at least. And then highest level is ihsan. What is ihsan? An ta'bud Allah ka'anna ka tarahu, fa illam takun tarahu fa innahu yaraq. That your belief in Allah's existence and presence reaches that level of conviction as if you are seeing Him with your own eyes. And if not that, you must have a feeling that He is seeing you and you are in His presence. But you know this hadith has been narrated by so many sahaba. Hazrat Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abu Huraira. And there are slight differences in wordings. So let me give you three things here. An ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tarahu. An taqsha Allah ka anna ka tarahu. An ta'amala lillah ka anna ka tarahu. Fa illam taku tarahu wa innahu yaraq. You worship Allah as if you see Him. You fear Allah as if you see Him. You work for Allah. You strive for Allah. With such an intensity as if you are seeing. This is Ihsan. Now we find there are three stations, three levels. But the driving force, what will take me from the first to the second? Taqwa. What will take me from the second to the third? Taqwa. How beautifully this taqwa is being repeated here. لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جِنَاهُونَ فِي مَا تَعِمُوا إِذَا مَتَّقَوْا وَآمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سُمَّتْ تَقَوْا وَآمَنُوا سُمَّتْ تَقَوْا وَأَحْسَنُوا وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Three levels you have to climb step by step. لَتَرْكَبُنْ وَتَبَقَنْ وَنْتَبَقْ But you need some effort to go higher up. And you know the pushing force, the motivating force, the driving force is taqwa. Here I differ from Marana Madhudi. He has written a very good book. A very small pamphlet, really, but very profound. He has taken them to be four stations. Iman, Taqwa, Islam, Ihsan. According to this ayah, Taqwa is not a station. Taqwa is not a level. It's the continually driving force. Stations are only three. Islam or legal Iman. Then real Iman. Then Ihsan. But anyhow, the subject matter of that booklet is very good, very profound. But here, you know, it's better. Because Taqwa is repeated three times here. It is the driving force. And second point which this ayah clears very much is the difference of opinion between Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Bukhari. Imam Abu Hanifa says that Iman and Amal Nisaleh, they are two separate entities. Imam Bukhari says, no, Iman and Amal Nisaleh are one, organic whole. Both are hundred percent correct. How? Apparently, these statements are self-contradictory. But one is speaking about the legal Iman. Imam Abu, Imam Abu Hanifa is a jurist. He looks to the legal sides of the matter. At the legal level, Iman is separate, Amal is separate. Amal is not part of Iman. But at the real level, they amalgamate with each other. They become an organic whole. This is what you find here. At the legal level, 
ازامت تقو آمنو و عامن الصالحات سمت تقو آمنو ناؤ دی عمل صالح is not mentioned here again because now it has become an integral part of ایمان they have mixed with each other as an organic whole inseparable لا ينفق Allahu yuhibbul mursaleen and whosoever reaches that level of ihsan, well, he becomes the beloved of Allah. May Allah give us at least the courage to make a firm resolve to rise to that level. If you have the intention, Allah will open ways for you. If we have only the progress in business and profession, having more and more property and so on, well, Allah will give you. But if now you change your field of ambitions, I want to go this way. I am a legal Muslim. And this is also by the grace of Allah that I was born to Muslim parents. But I won't be contented with this station. I'll go to real Iman. And then not only to real Iman, but to Islam. May Allah bless us. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يبلونكم الله بشيء من الصيد. Oh, you who believe, Allah will surely test you with a game, hunting. تناله أديكم وربعكم because it was declared to be unlawful, forbidden to hunt something and to to have a game when you are in Ihram. You are wearing the sacred robes of Hajj and Umrah. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will test you. Sometimes you will find that some very beautiful deer is within your reach. You can just catch him by your arm. Or it is in the reach of your arrows or spears. So it will be a test. Whether you refrain because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not allowed me, I am in Iram. Or where, whether you are tempted, oh, this is so near, so easy. Catch hold of it. Get it. Ya ayu ladhina amanu la yablowannakumu allahu bishayi min as-sayde tanaluhu aedikum wa rimahukum. Your hands, your arms, your spears, you know, they reach them. Le yalam allahu man yakhafuhu bil ghayb. So that Allah should come to know and he wants to make it clear. Who fears him? Unseen. He believes in an unseen Allah. And he thinks, ah, nobody is seeing me when I am doing this. But because he believes that Allah is seeing me. This is Iman bin Ghayb. In the very beginning, you know, we find in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَذَلِّ الْبُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ فَمَنِ اعْتَدَى بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَلَهُ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ Whosoever transgresses after this, for him, is a painful chastisement. Ya ayu ladhin amanu la taqulu sayra wa antum hurum. Again, repetition. Don't kill any game. When you are muhrim, you are wearing those robes of ihram. Wa ban qatalahu minku muta'amidan. And if someone of you kills some game, knowingly, intentionally, fajadaw mislu ma qatala min al-nabi. Now the penalty is an animal which should be like the animal that he has hunted. If it was a deer, a goat will suffice. If it was a bigger something, then you'll have to sacrifice a cow. The decide of the animal that he has hunted. And who will decide it? Yahkumu bihi zawaadli minkum. Two just men must, you know, decide. Amongst, from amongst you. But now you have done it, so the penalty is that you sacrifice a goat or a cow or so on as a penalty. Hadiyam Bali al Kaaba. It's going to be present to reach Kaaba. Aukafaratun. And if you can't do it, you can't purchase a goat or a cow to sacrifice as a penalty. Kafaratu ta'amu masakina, 
کفارت ان تعام و مساکینہ و عدل ان ظال کا سیام لیزو کا وبال امر ہی ناؤ یو ہیو ٹو فیڈ دی پور پیپل وٹ شوڈ بی دی نمبر آف پیپل اٹ ول بی ڈسائڈیڈ ہاؤ مینی مین کین بی فیڈ آن ون گوٹ اور شیپ دوز مین فیڈ دم اور عدل الزالک عدل الزالک کا سیامن اور دی سیم نمبر یو کیپ فاسٹ اف یو کان فیڈ پیپل یو ڈونٹ ہیو منی اف یو نو دی پینلٹی واز ٹو بی اے گوٹ اٹ کوڈ سفائز فار ٹوینٹی پیپل دین ٹوینٹی ڈیز فاسٹنگ از یو نو کفارا لے یزو کا وبال عام رہی سو دیٹ ہی میں ٹیسٹ دی کانسیکوینس آف وٹ ہی از ڈن اف اللہ اما صرف وٹ از ایور ہیپن ان فاسٹ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ہیز پارڈن ڈیٹ وٹ از گون گون ومن آدھا فین تقم اللہ من ہو نا ہو سو ایور ریپیٹس اٹ اگین آفٹر دی ڈیکلوریشن آف دیز فائنل لاس اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی will take retribution from him and wallahu azizun zintiqam and allah is aziz all powerful and is lord of retribution oh illa lakum sahdul bahr but there is an exception if you are traveling in a river or a sea in a boat oh illa lakum sahdul bahr wa ta'amuhu wa ta'al lakum wa li sayyara Because conditions can be very different while you are on sea. Nothing to eat. Nothing else. So there, you know, hunting of the sea, fishing, it is permissible. And eating it is okay. Mata'al lakum, provision for you and for the travelers. Wali sayyara wa hurrim alaykum sayyadul barrim adun tum hurman. As long as you are in ihram, This hunting of the land is prohibited to you. And have taqwa of Allah to whom you will be gathered together. In His presence you will have to stand. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الْقَعْبَةَ الْبَيْتَ الْحَرَامَ قِيَامًا لِلنَّاسِ وَالشَّهْرَ الْحَرَامَ وَالْحَدِيَ وَالْقَلَائِدِ Now this, these words came in the very beginning also. Now Allah confirms it, reconfirming it. Allah has declared Kaaba. جعل الله الكعبة البيت الحرام. This is the sacred house. In the same way, it is a قيام للناس. It is the support and security for people. Whosoever enters it, من دخله كان آمنا. وشار الحرام. In the same way, Allah has declared some months to be sacred. No fighting, no killing each other. والهدية والقلائد. In the same way, the animals which are take, being taken there for sacrifice and who have garlands as a sign in their necks. ذَلِكَ لِتَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهِ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And this is to emphasize upon you that Allah knows whatever is in the heavens and in the earth. أَنَّ اللَّهِ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهِ بِكُلِّ شَيْنَ لِي But Allah knows everything. Don't think that if nobody is seeing you, you will go, go scot-free. All these rules you have to keep, whether you are only single person in the whole wilderness, nobody else is going to see you, but Allah is seeing you. Elamu an Allah shadidu liqab, Allahu ghafuru rahim. I told you these are the two aspects, two attributes of Allah which will, which must be kept in mind simultaneously. Be it known to you. Number one. In Anna Allah Shadidu Liqab. He is very severe in punishment. Wa Anna Allah Ghafur Rahim. And Allah at the same time is Ghafur, forgiving and merciful. Both these things should be there. So, a Muslim attitude should be somewhere between Khauf and Raja. The fear of the accountability of the Day of Judgment, the fear of the punishment of Allah. That should also remain in your mind. But the hope to be forgiven, because Allah is forgiving, that should also not vanish from your minds. If the hope, the rope of hope is broken, 
your heart will break. The intention and the will to amend your ways will be weakened. So, ban al khawf wal raja. There should be hope also. And there should be khawf also. Wa ma'ala rasul illa al balag. And there's nothing, no responsibility of our messenger except conveying. Allah ya'lamu ma tubduna wa ma taktubuna and Allah very well knows what you have been doing openly and what you have been doing secretly. قُلْ لَا يَسْتَبِ الْخَبِيسَ وَالطَّيِّبِ وَلَوْ عَجَبَ كَسْرَةُ الْخَبِيسِ Tell good and bad are not equal. Although the abundance of bad might please you. Might appearing to you, might appear to you to be very pleasing. I am earning from haram, but I have high, you know, money. I have bank balance. I have this thing. I have this thing. Now this is very pleasant, but this is bad. In the end, it's not going to do good to any to do you any good. It will turn into snakes and scorpions on the day of judgment in the hell. So, قُلْ لَا يَسْتَمِلْ خَبِيسُ وَالطَّيِّبُ The good and bad, the pure and foul, they are not equal. وَلَوْ عَجَبَ كَسْرَةُ الْخَبِيسُ Although the abundance of khabis might be very pleasing, appear to be very pleasant to you. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ يَعُدِلَ الْبَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, people of understanding. You see how often this taqwa, it taqu, it taqu, it taqu, have taqwa, is repeated in the Qur'an. And this is peculiar to the Qur'an. No, the, this Qur'an doesn't give us the sharia in the dry form of books of the law. If you read a legal document, it's very dry, you know. Qur'an is giving the legal education. All the do's and don'ts are coming. But you know, in what a good manner, with taqwa, with ihsan, good advice, moving words, appealing to your souls also, appealing to your passions also, appealing to your intellect also, appealing to your intelligence, appealing to your understanding also, all these things, the wholesome approach to transform the human character into a good man, a good bondsman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a good soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the upholder of justice, who becomes witness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayu al-lazina amanu kunu qawwamina bil qist shuhada lillah. Ya ayu al-lazina amanu kunu qawwamina lillahi shuhada bil qist. May Allah give us the courage to become one of them. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at
T-A-N-Z-E-E-M dot U-S or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.